Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Deepa Robbins from Designs by D and today I have a beautiful Magnolia border card in which I'm going to show you some ink blending over foil and how I do some foiling over ink blending. It's actually a really cool technique. Both ways works completely fine and I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks to make this work for you with different types of inks. Now for this card I used a combination of distress inks which are the dye inks and the distress oxide inks and they both work well but in different ways and I'll explain that throughout the video. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using the Spellbinders Magnolia Glimmer Bloom set and I have got to say I'm in love with this set. It has such a nice big area to foil compared to other smaller pieces that you get for foiling and it's just nice because you can actually cut this magnolia bloom up and use it in different areas which is what I'm going to be doing to create the border for this card. So I'm actually foiling this entire bloom four times on white cardstock with some Spellbinders polished brass foil. I will be foiling it on hammer mill white color copy cardstock. Now if you have paid attention to Pink Fresh Studio they've over and over again told everybody hammer mill hammer mill hammer mill. This is the best cardstock you can use for foiling and I know that Spellbinders also has their own cardstock and the reason why it's good is because it's so nice and smooth and the smoothness is what allows that foil to stick nicely to the paper in the places that you want it. So I went ahead and foiled this four times as I said and I find that when I'm doing a lot of foiling I like to use the Spellbinders foil trimmer. So because I'm foiling the same thing multiple times this makes it easier to just cut your foil the right size as many times as you'd like and then you just foil one thing after the other after the other while your system is hot. So this is why I really like the trimmer. Now if you're foiling things one off just like a one die here or like one plate there you really don't need to use this trimmer. It's easier just to cut it by hand but for doing um, I guess mass production it works perfectly. So what I did was I took the coordinating die and I cut all of those out and those are the beautiful magnolia blooms you get. As you see, I'm only using four. So then I decided that I wanted to use the Pink Fresh Studio solid plate. Now, especially with this plate, you have to use the hammer mill. I'm going to stress it and I'll stress it again. The hammer mill is the only thing that will allow solid foiling to come out flawlessly. And even then, you need to make sure you stick to the tips and tricks, which is to make sure your system is really hot. Make sure you put it through your die cutting machine slowly so that the pressure is applied evenly. And what I like to do here is to kind of rub down that foil before I remove that release paper. By rubbing it down, it kind of sticks that foil down. And I'm showing you here, this is the hammer mill uh, cardstock that I use. I know that there are other types, but as long as it's nice and smooth, it should work. So now you see I can pull that off. Now you get a little bit of the gold coming off there, and that's probably just because I didn't let my system get like really hot. So after your system is ready to go, I say let it heat up another five to 10 minutes to make sure it's extremely hot and that it's gonna foil nicely. Now that piece that I just showed you was foiled perfectly and you can see that there's nothing showing. There's no missing foil or anything. So if you follow the tips and tricks and do it with the hammer mill cardstock, I guarantee you're gonna get great results every time. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add some color to these magnolia blooms and I'm using a small blending brush. Now these brushes are perfect for smaller images like this because I can actually pinpoint not only the center of the flower but also different edges of the petals that I want darkened more. So the first color that I added was Dusty Concord and this is Distress Ink. So I'm gonna stress this is the dye ink. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna absorb into my cardstock and it's not gonna like sit on the surface of the paper like a pigment ink might do. So this works perfectly for ink blending over foil. Now any of the ink that sits on top of the foil is just gonna kind of repel it and just kind of beat up on top. If it's a lot of ink, if it's a little ink like this, you won't even see it. If you see any excess ink, just take a dry towel or a paper towel and just dab it on top and any excess ink will be removed and you will still keep the ink that's on the white colored, uh, sorry, the white cardstock portion. So I then added some Victoria Velvet to kind of blend it out. And then I also added some sponge sugar just to make it a little more pinky on the edges of the flowers. And you get a nice purpley pink magnolia, which is so indicative of magnolia flowers. 
And I like the idea of doing this really light ink blending because it just looks very elegant. So I went ahead and did this on all four pieces. And once I was done, I turned to my background. So for my background, I'm using a panel which is six and three quarters by four and three quarters. So this is gonna make a five by seven inch card. So this is a bigger card and I'm telling you, I only use those four magnolia blooms to make the border. So it is gonna be more than enough if you are making an A2 size card. Now for this background, I chose to use Dusty Concord, Seedless Preserves, and some Chip Sapphire. Now I started off with the Dusty Concord and I kind of just filled the entire background and I concentrated the color in the center. Later on, I'm going to kind of adjust the color in the center, but for now this is what I went with. So I added as much um, ink as possible. Now on the edges, just to darken it and make it like a darker purple, I decided to add the Chip Sapphire oxide ink. So again, I'm stressing, I'm using this oxide ink on the panel. Now the beauty of the oxide ink is it has that pigment um, aspect to it. So it's going to sit on top of your paper. Now I am going to note that I did not use hammer mill cardstock. I use some simple Nina cardstock and it's actually thinner than probably the cardstock you use. And so, so by way of not being hammer mill, it's not smooth. But I'm telling you, once you add all of these oxide inks, it makes this panel so nice and glossy and smooth, it foils like a gem. So even if you don't have the hammer mill cardstock and you want to do foiling on ink blended cardstock, use your oxide inks. Not only are you going to get some nice vibrant colors, but you're going to be able to foil it flawlessly. So as I said, I went back and I got my seedless preserves and I actually added some of that to the center of the panel because I just wanted a bit more of a pinky purple rather than just like the, the darker dusty concord. So that's my panel complete. Now I'm deciding to use the Spellbinders March 2021 Glimmer Kit of the Month. This is a really nice kit for sentiments. So I decided to use the wishing you a happy birthday sentiment here and I'm just centering it on the center of my card. Now even just to stick this down, my washi tape isn't totally sticking because as I said, that panel is so smooth when it's inked up with the oxide ink. So once I put that through, look at that. It foiled so perfectly, no overfoiling, no underfoiling. It just worked out nicely. So I will recommend using oxide inks when foiling on top of ink blending and using dye distress inks when doing ink blending on top of foiling. You could probably use oxide inks for ink blending on top of foil as well. You just might have to wipe up off a bit more ink from your foil. Now, do keep in mind that ink blending on top of foil really does no harm to the foil at all. It's already heat set and pressed into the uh, paper, so you don't really have to worry about it coming off too much. The only time I worry about foil coming off is if I'm maybe die cutting it and I stick the washi tape or tape onto the foil, then it most likely will come off. But to add ink on top of it, you really shouldn't have any problems. Now, you can see here I'm adding those four magnolia blooms to the border of that panel. And I'm using some foam squares here. And in some cases, I'm actually sticking it straight onto the panel with some Barely Arts glue. So I'm doing this to create different levels of dimension. And every time I stick it on, I'm cutting off the excess to create a, set, a straight edge. So by cutting off the excess, I'm creating extra pieces. And these extra pieces help me fill in that border. And this is why I only needed four of those magnolia blooms. So you don't have to go crazy foiling a whole bunch of pieces. You, you really don't need too many with this bloom set because it is such a big image. And because you're cutting the, that piece off the edge, you're creating extra pieces. So you're really just kind of doubling the amount of pieces you're adding to this card and it fills it up nicely. So you can see in some cases, I just kind of haphazardly stuck the foam on the back of these pieces and attached it to the border. And in some cases, I kind of outlined it with my pencil so that I knew exactly where to put those foam squares. And now I'm just taking all of the extra little pieces and kind of just filling in the edges. What I want to do is make sure that there's not too much of the purple on the edge so that it's more of a border of these glimmered images. So once I've got all those little, little pieces stuck down there, um, what I did was when I filled it in, all of those pieces I'm adding with my Barely Art glue because it's going to be hard to kind of add them with the foam. And you can see this creates just such a lovely border. That beautiful pink and purple, lightly blended, looks so nice on that foiled white cardstock. 
And then you also have that beautiful purple center with that same foil for the sentiment. I think this just actually turned out really stunning and I can't wait to try it in different colors. So now I'm going to go ahead and embellish and I'm using some Pink Fresh Studio Lavender Jewels. Now these Lavender Jewels go perfectly with the colors that I chose for this card. I'm not going to add too many, just a few in the center. And then I'm also going to use some AB Crystal Nail Art Gems. So I've mentioned before, these are just some simple gems from Amazon. I usually link them in my description and in my blog, but you don't, I don't think you really need to have them linked. Just go into Amazon and type in Nail Art Gems. There'll be a whole bunch of different kinds and you can choose whichever ones you want. Now I went ahead and I took those negatively foiled pieces the magnolias that I foiled using the solid plate and I'm actually going to just use them on the inside of my card. So I'm only using two of those magnolia pieces so I can actually keep the other two for another project and maybe I could create a whole new card front for it. And I also found that I didn't um, do it here. I ran out of time but I could have used maybe a fifth magnolia bloom and added just uh, a colored another colored piece to the inside and that would have really made these um, these polished brass uh, foiled blooms on the inside kind of stand out just a little bit more. But I just kept it simple here and just added these pieces for now. Now I keep my cards plain nowadays on the inside. I don't really add the sentiments anymore until I'm ready to actually give them to somebody. You can add any sentiment you want. As you can see, this is a happy birthday card. You can add a stamp sentiment or your own personal message. So there is the final card and you can see it turned out beautifully. Keep in mind, those were only four magnolia blooms. I'm stunned myself. I'm telling you, you don't need too many and this card doesn't take too much time at all. So I hope you guys have been inspired to do some ink blending on foil and foiling on ink blending and that these little tips in terms of using oxides versus the dye inks makes a big difference for you and you can take that and apply that to your card making. So please keep in mind that all of the products used here are linked in my blog, which is linked in the description of this video. Go ahead and click on those if you're wanting to buy any of these products. I would really appreciate it as these are affiliate links. I do get a bit of a commission and that just helps me keep bringing you more videos and more ideas. I hope you've all enjoyed my video. Please give me a thumbs up and like my uh, video if you did like it. Hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos if you are subscribed. And I hope to see you guys again next time. Have a great day. Bye.